समीसान निर्वाण रूपम विभुम व्यापकम ब्रह्मवेद स्वरूपम निजम निर्गुणम निर्विकल्प निरीहम चिदाकाश महाकाश भाषम भजय परम गुरुभ्यो नम अद द्विसप्ताहात्मिका कार्यशाला पंचम दिवस पंचम दिवस द्वितीय सत्र स्म अस्म सत्र अस्मा ज्ञान विदर्द आगत प्रोफेसर डी शारदा महोदय यहाँ महोदय अवसर प्राप्त डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ होम साइंस फॉर्मर डेक्टर एस पी एम यूनिवर्सिटी तिरपति प्रथम दिन भी आगत अस्मा रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम इति विषय मुरीकृत सम्यक्तया वहीत परंतु अद रिसर्च डिजाइन इति विषय तस् आवश्यकता का प्रकार एवं अर्थ इति विषय मुरीकृत अस्मा बोध्य अतः महोदया कार्यशाला पक्षत केन्द्र पक्षत सर्वेश पक्षत सुस्वागत विकमा कृपया महोदय अभिमंच विराजंत एवं अस्मा सारल्यन विषय बोधय Uh, today we will try to know about research designs. Last class, that is on the first day, we have discussed the importance of a research problem. How a research problem is a, like a foundation for a research project. It's very very important. While discussing about research problem itself, we said all our research problems. have to be based on a good research design that is how you frame a research problem is related to your research design that is very important and then to select a research problem and research design it is necessary to grow through the earlier studies that is in the form of review of literature i think he will uh, start uh, a uh, projecting the ppt research design what is the meaning of research design what is the need for research design what are the various types of research design available so you can say are these research designs have come from a theoretical basis no these research designs have been tried out by earlier researchers and were classified no two research designs are similar you cannot put them under one category so we have classified them meaningfully depending upon how they what is the need for data in the first class itself i mean first lecture itself we are discussing that our data needs are more important broad data needs come from uncertainty that is something which is not clear we would like to know more about it that is the basis for our research so what do you want what is this these are data needs is it qualitative is it subjective is it going to measure the cause and effect relationship is it going to give an explanation to a theoretical base what is it so all of us as researchers first should realize what are our data needs research design as you can see in the slide it is a plan of action for the research process that is we want to go for a movie we plan which what time we want to go which class we want to go by which mode we want to go with whom you want to go what kind of dress you want to wear would you like to eat at home or eat out out all those things we see in a simple event also we plan research is a very big thing it involves lot of human and financial resources so it should be planned well including the methodologies so research is a plan of action decided much earlier to research problem 
based on review of literature and it is like a road map that is it helps us to reach our goal so here we have explained that uh, it's a meaning you have to state in your exam or anywhere research design is a plan for research process developed for the research problem selected it is a blueprint or framework used to carry a research study you may ask once we have decided our research design plan a plan of action can't we change yes so any researcher new researcher is a novice to the field may not conceptualize understand the whole process there may be some corrections have to be made you may have to go back and move forward or change your path also such things can be done it is not a rigid plan it is a flexible one help you to go ahead of your research so there is the need for research design to find answers to research questions or to test hypotheses as i said earlier the qualitative researchers we generate hypotheses we do not test mostly a research hypothesis quantitative research we test the hypothesis here need for research is to find answers to research questions or test hypothesis it entails laying out the general strategy strategy is a course of action and procedures that will be employed that is that are used for data collection and then analysis that is research design from top to bottom first step to the last step everything will be included in our research design each and everything we think of and we include for that based on our data needs which design is good will decide an appropriately selected and executed research design helps in conduct of high quality research having done research having spent so much of time and money and consulted so many people we want the outcome to be very good outcome always gives a reputation to the researcher and also to his career development also so quality research is important for that reason we must understand which research design is suitable for our research and what are our data needs a good research design reduces systematic errors there are two types of errors errors by chance other one is systematic errors systematic errors can be corrected only through a research design whereas chance errors can be corrected by the sample size how you select sample size of sample all those things what are the uses of research design it gives a very clear direction the minute you think of research design finalize your research topic decide on your data needs and have a concept of which type of research design i want that is vaguely then immediately it clarifies your gives you the right direction to proceed in your research work it helps in control of variables what variables i am selecting for example um examples of demographic variables age gender uh, place of residence annual income size of family type of family and um, socio economic status these are all. sometimes nowadays people are using personal profile of the sample that is the uh, educational status of the sample occupation and educational status of mother father separately all these things are connected but in education does mother's education have an influence on the child's progress in the school and family literacy index is another variable total family education is in formal education here formal education received is collected and the average is calculated that is called family literacy index may even uh, uneducated or not much educated women have better knowledge because interaction within the family with husband and educated people in the family that is the reason why family literacy index is also included as it, as a one of the variable so these are the demographic variables we call independent variables or predictor variables and dependent variables the outcome 
what do you want to measure? The academic achievement or performance or any other uh, aspect you want to measure that is outcome or dependent variable or criterion variable. So these variables you will have a can control by designing properly. Identification of compounding, compounding variables. There are some variables which are not related to the research may show an influence on your research. So such variables have to be, uh, effect has to be reduced and they have to be identified and controlled. So reduction of bias and error, this is also another use of research design. You can subjective and objective, mostly subjective human bias may be there in subjective data. To reduce it, that thing will have employed tools like checklist or a guide for observation, such things we use. So by developing proper tools or including tools, we can overcome defects in research design, that is error or bias. A replication, once you have started your research, you have done very well, your outcome is very good, your research design is very good. So there is a scope for other people to use this research design for further research, that is replication or replicable model we call it. Another use of research design is validity. Validity as you know, accuracy, that is what you want to measure if you measure, that is validity. That is, you want to measure the intelligence of the people, I mean students, pupils. So your tool should be able to measure intelligence of the students or social maturity of the children, emotional maturity of the children. What is the variable you want to measure? The same thing it has to, if it is able to measure, it is called validity. So a good research design promotes internal validity. Reliability is consistency. So if you repeat two or three times also, results will be somewhere around the same. For example, physics, chemistry and other things. If you uh, reduce the temperature, bring it down to zero, it will be ice. It is very easily done in some subjects. But human and social sciences, it is difficult to, to come to that accuracy. But Consistency can be established, that is called reliability. There are techniques also for reliability. So a research design helps in having a good reliability. If your reliability and validity is not there in your data, in your research, the total research will be questioned. Efficiency. Increases the efficiency of research process. So most efficiently you can conduct your research because you know the direction, your tools are valid and tools are reliable because you have tested established methods to do it. So you are very confident to proceed. So it can give you, make you efficient in conducting the research. Now we, next slide. Now we come to the classification of research designs. N number of research designs are there. We have chosen some research designs which are more rele relevant to social sciences, humanities and few life sciences also. Um, somebody is, sometimes some of the designs are being used. Actually the research designs related to education I found from books is very well explained by Biomedical research people. Please, research scholars, boys five members, girls five members, department protection to Idani Vaiva Vasi Bhoti, Karnam Kim Bhoti Chukte. Design classification. So it's interesting to note how research designs are what basins they are classified. Based on the type of of data collected for hypothesis generation or testing, they are classified. Based on the type of data to study the patterns, relationships and trends, again they are classified. To identify the causes 
of the problems and test a solution, they are given a classification. Research designs classified on the selection and manipulation of variables or factors, if not variables, their factors included in the study, depending on assigning exposure and non-exposure and comparison group and non-comparison groups. They are next slide. So depending upon the manipulation of variables and factors included, that's manipulation of the factors. And depending on the exposure and non-exposure again, they are classified. We'll discuss what are the various designs falling under each of these categories. Next slide, please. No, next slide. Oh, yes. No, yes, yes, yes. We have taken the, based on the classification, most of us have come across this. Qualitative versus quantitative research. Another one is experimental and observational research. Fundamental, which is also called basic or pure research versus applied research. Descriptive versus analytical research. Cross-sectional versus longitudinal research. Prospective versus retrospective research. There are some types of researches fall under one of these categories which we will see in the following slides. Next one. Types of research, qualitative research. Qualitative, the term itself says that it has a limited quantitative data. It is not that it doesn't have any limited quantitative, no quantitative data. It will have a limited quantitative data in this no hypothesis testing is there and it, we can generate hypothesis from qualitative research. These designs are concerned with collecting answers to the why and how of a phenomena, mostly what, why, how it is used in question and the data is mostly subject. Quantitative research the data in these designs are quantifiable, measurable, allows statistical analysis and hypothesis testing. Qualitative research, even if the data is there, it is mostly non-parametric, which will not have any additive property. Whereas quantitative research, you will have data both parametric and non-parametric. Most of the education psychology tools are non-parametric, like uh, uh, very poor, average, good, very good, yes. excellent, like that. It is rated on a Likert scale or other type of scale where the perceptions are received. That is, you are not actually measuring. So, what they perceive, they are expressing on a scale. So, it is. it will not have any additive property, but it is can be used for analysis like chi-square test, etc, etc. The next types of... So, qualitative research, some of the methods here given. Observations. Observations, you can use the checklist to be objective. And you can use some interview guide kind of thing to make the observation. In detail, anecdotes also used. So, to have a description of the situation so that no bias is there. So X has spoke to the Y and Y has responded like this. X has. So the situation you, as it is you narrate, it is called an anecdote. So observation leads to recording an anecdote or you can use a checklist for present or not presenting a behavior, things like that. One on you, one-to-one -one interviews. Interview also will have an interview guide. So, depending using an interview guide, you can ask the question so that you will not deviate and you can be objective. 
and interview is more useful because you can observe the non-verbal behavior also, especially in one-to-one -one interviews. Focus groups. Focus groups are more popular in social sciences and community science also. So focus group, as you know, people sit in a round, in a circular form and then discuss the on a particular topic, their opinions are collected. There are one of them is asked to record the uh, information contributed by each member in the focus group. Whatever is recorded again read out by one of the members, and if they are contradicting, again you delete it or rewrite it kind of thing. So FGDs are very popular for quick collection of data. Authentic and reliable first hand because it comes from the group itself. It can be student, it can be teacher, it can be community, any setup. It is also made scientific. Uh, Robert Chambers is the person who has uh, first uh, uh, done this uh, uh, Rural Development is a book. Rural Development, Tourism, Rural, putting the last first, putting the last two first to last kind of thing and uh, he has done a uh, lot of research in participatory appraisal, rural participatory appraisal, so participation. Uh, so here all people are involved and information is coming from the participants or the sample. <coughs> case study research. Case study research is uh, in detailed case. It can be about case, can be an institution, Case can be individual and case study research collects information. This also will have the opinions and the anecdotes and all those things. Objectively it can be collected. And nowhere a researcher's opinion should enter into the data. So that if the, if the researcher goes to the field with a preconceived idea, these people are like this, this, this is going to be this, then there will be a problem. So open mind, the researcher should go, can use these methods for qualitative research. Qualitative research is one area, bias is suspected, yes it is suspected. Ethnographic research, ethnographic research is newly you are going to a tribal area, first time you are going there, not much information about these people. You stay there, collect information about their culture, their food habits, <coughs> their way of living, and how they handle the issues. All those things are ethnographic studies, where you collect information about culture and other things. Grounded theory. Grounded theory is somewhat like this only, where you will collect information related to the theory, and then existing theory and try to establish the new facts. Phenomenology. <coughs> Phenomenology also, a phenomena is observed and collected information on the cause and effect of how the things are happening in a setup, that is phenomenology. So the next one. This is an example of quantitative research. <coughs> Exposed to factor research. Exposed to factor research is uh, incidents has already occurred. Things have already happened. So you are analyzing the data, collecting the information, digging back to find the cause, effect you have seen. It is also <coughs> not same as retrospective research, but something like that. For example, so many people, say hundreds of people in this area come to the hospital with a renal disease. So one area maybe uh, uh, mostly Bengal people come to CMC hospital with <coughs> renal disease. So what is the reason for this? You go back, the disease has already occurred. So you go back and verify, try to collect information from the sample so that uh, you will try to know what could be the risk factor. Already established risk factors are there, but you try to study them, what is the quantity, what is the frequency of the particular risk factor, 
what could be the reason for this particular exposed to, exposed to factor is that this effect is already there, but you go back and see the cause. Cross sectional design. Cross sectional design is at one time you collect the data, your sample will be across the age group. That is cross sectional design. Longitudinal design is a for longer period, same group you observe. For this, what you say using the same tools, same tools you try to assess. Correlational research, you try to study the relationship between. Maybe one increases, one decreases. One maybe one increases, other one also increases like that. For example, uh, more marks in social sciences, more marks in languages. More marks in mathematics, more marks in physical sciences. Just an example. So you try to see the correlation. Is, is it the same? This pattern is observable in students. You would like to see that is the reason. The correlational designs are also can be used. Survey research is a very simple research but expensive because you need enumerators <coughs> and survey schedules have to be properly developed and it can be repeated again and again. That is pre-concurrent post like that you can do the survey research. Quasi-experimental design. So maybe uh, we'll, we'll discuss about it in detail. What is the difference between experimental design and quasi-experimental design is Experimental design <coughs> needs randomization. That is, randomly you have to select the sample for experimental and control group. In quasi-experimental design, without control group you can do, with control group you can do, randomization need not be there. That is the difference. So these are the types of quantitative research designs which are now presently used. Next slide. Let us know about experimental versus observational research. Experimental is you design and conduct a research. Observation is what is there you observe. In an experimental design, the sample are applied some treatment to one of the groups while the other group does not receive the treatment. Example is a laboratory experiment, the experiment design that is in research, quasi-experimental design, factorial designs. Factorial design is a statistical design but it is used here, comes under experimental design. In an observational study, the sample are studied without any manipulating. You will not touch the variables, you will not expose them to any treatment without trying to affect the sample. Observational study design types are ecological research, cohort. Cohort is mostly used in clinical research, birth cohort, school cohort, that is, you make a beginning. For example, some people board a train. So at the boarding of the train, you will include all of them in your study. It's only an example. You observe throughout the journey for various factors like their health or their lifestyle their behavior, socialization, whatever it is, throughout the journey. End of the journey, maybe in between some people may drop out also. So end of the journey, you try to analyze the data and arrive at conclusion. Cohort is like that. Cohort is mostly done in clinical research for presence or development of a particular disease or condition. Indians are more prone to diabetes. So, newly born children 
are taken to conduct a cohort study. Maybe a study habits are learned only in school. Early childhood education has an influence on academic achievement of children in further education. So you start a cohort from early childhood education, follow them for a longer period. That is called cohort. Cohort is a, also like a longitudinal study, but it is also observation, cross-sectional, case control, case crossover, retrospective, like as I said earlier, retrospective studies also conducted in biomedical researches where you go back and study. So many people died with particular disease. So the disease is more intriguing because they are not able to find what disease it is, like our uh, HIV AIDS and how they found all those things. So going back and studying is retrospective. Prospective is cohort. Like from now onward, you are moving forward. You trying to find the cause you know, you want to see the effect. Retrospective, you know the effect, you are going back to find the cause. And diagnostic study designs. These are the few designs which are experimental versus <coughs> observational designs. Some may be relevant, may not be relevant. How do I select experimental design, especially with related to experiment, no experiment kind of thing? You can ask this question. Is random assignment used? That randomly am I going to use, assign the sample? That is the first one for one group, third one for the group, or dias, or random tables I am going to use. So is random assignment used? If yes, then randomized or true experiment you have to select. If no, again ask a question, is there a control group or multiple measures? If yes, choose quasi-experimental design. If no, non-experiment. Non-experiment meaning you go to observation and kind of thing. Observational studies, cross-sectional studies, case control study, retrospective study as we have seen earlier, prospective study, cohort study, longitudinal study. Most of the international agencies funding like WHO and um, major agencies funding will be cohort studies. Uh, save the children. Yeah, our university also has saved the children project in social work which is going on for nearly 15 years. So they are cohort studies, longitudinal studies. Next one. Pure research we call. All or most of the theories are built based on the, even sciences, based on the pure research. Even in sciences you have the pure research. Fundamental research, it is called basic research versus applied research. Fundamental research is to generate theory, test the old theory, reaffirm or add to the theory or contradict the existing theory, add the new theory. That is the fundamental or basic research or pure research. Fundamental or pure or basic research focuses on advancement of knowledge rather than solving a problem. This type of research is selected out of interest to contribute to theory building or fill the gap in knowledge in specific area. This type of researches are much less nowadays unless a, a new area is coming up like a, a computers and things like that. Applied research. Applied research directs efforts towards finding a solution for a specific problem. Most of the agriculture, veterinary sciences, nutrition and even in education, psychology, applied research is more popular. That is, some problem is there, 
you think of a solution based on your experience and also expertise you feel that this will work will be helpful so you develop a model implement it on a sample and if it is successful you apply it to the other group this type of research focuses on finding solutions to problems in the research area to benefit the community community includes each and every one of us all age groups all walks of life also examples of next Examples of fundamental or pure or basic research is qualitative, quantitative, mixed. Because uh, fundamental research is also done in statistics and mathematics also. Applied research. Applied research, you will have action research. quasi experimental problem solving interventional study designs participatory action research action is that knowledge attitude and practice models are more popular for action research people always say if knowledge is there automatically change in attitude occurs it leads to practice for example every day we see Uh, various sources they explain that to control diabetes do not eat this do not eat that do not eat that do not eat this everybody all of us have knowledge even diabetics have knowledge and pre diabetics have knowledge but yet action is not there means knowledge is there attitude you do not know practice is not there if practice is there your diabetes would have been controlled postponed things like that so action research best example is kap studies so you assess the knowledge of the people you assess the attitudes of the levels of attitude of the people low mod- moderate high and then you assess the practice how far they are practicing using the same scales only so you develop an intervention model there is another design give the educational intervention and then test it again so for example people go to mantena satyanarayana people go to jindal people go to so many places that is to bring out the change in lifestyle that is to change in practice if the change is there already occurred your sugar level has decreased your weight is reduced is there you can always assess the attitude and knowledge is the right attitude inculcated then it will continue for longer period if attitude and knowledge gap is there then again you will go back to the old method like earlier problem will occur so action research intends to bring change in knowledge attitude and practice of the people quasi experimental design this also you will have several designs we'll discuss here later here if this is also an experiment randomization is not there problem solving so problem is there you want to solve that particular problem anemia is a big problem so you want to solve that particular problem you develop a model educate them monitor and then see that problem is solved maybe single digit students it is a biggest problem they have to pass their exam if they do not pass it leads to academic stress it may lead to suicide and other things at school dropout several other problems so you consider it to be a biggest problem for the children so you try to design a research so that they can be improved problem solving is addressing a problem through your research interventional just now i said participatory action research same action research 
the investigator participates in the research. TOT, Training of Trainers Program, where you train the trainers so that in turn they go on train. It can be any area. This is also a kind of action research. Unless you put it in the make it a research project. That is applied research. Next, descriptive versus analytical research. Earlier also I have explained, this is another one. Descriptive research classifies, describes, compares and measures data. In this type of design, what question, what of it is question and then the data generates answers for what. And there is no exposure, no comparison, no manipulation of variable. Here again tools can be used which are non-parametric. Here again hypothesis can be generated. Analytical research, analytical looks at why of a research problem and analyzes the data, compares groups without manipulation of variables. Next slide. Same thing we have put it in a bigger form picture form, descriptive research. Descriptive research observes and describes the characteristics and behaviors of the subjects or a group without manipulating the variable. Analytical research is an analytical method of analyzing data to uncover the patterns, gain insights into a specific phenomena or a problem. Here data is analyzed in analytical data. So the tools are also developed to suit that. Same descriptive research, another picture form we have placed. Here it is uh, fast finding enquiries and surveys method. Ascertains and describes the characteristics of the issue. Describes the state of affairs as it exists in the present no control over the variables. Analytical research, collected data is analyzed and explained beyond merely describing the characteristics because you have a data, you can say how much of it you can explain. Explains existing state of affairs from available data and it works within the constraint variables. So whatever the variables you have, the same variables you will be able to measure and even if you manipulate, the outcome is measured. Next one is cross-sectional and longitudinal. In a cross-sectional study, the sample is selected and studied as snapshot, that is across. It's only for a period of one year or six months to you collect data at a specific point of time. In a longitudinal study, the sample selected is studied over a period of time and repeatedly data is collected from the sample during the study period. These are all mostly done by National Institute of Monitoring Bureau or uh, National Institutes periodically collect the data. Next. This pictorially expressed cross-sectional and longitudinal data. At one point of time, cross-sectional, you are collecting the data. Longitudinal, periodically on, on the same sample, you are collecting the data. Prospective versus retrospective research. As I said, prospective is you know the cause, you want to find the effect. Here you know the risk factors or variables also. In prospective research, the sample selected or studied for a period to observe the change in their characteristics or effect. It is mostly used in clinical or biomedical research, for example, cohort studies. 
Prospective research can also be used in education also. Changes in IQ, changes in social maturity, changes in emotional maturity and uh, other things also can be observed. In retrospective, retro prospective research, that is backwards and forward design, the data is collected about the past of the sample to know the cause or risk factors as the effect is already known. These are also used in clinical or biomedical research. For example, not exactly the same, but it is also similar to exposed factor research. Next one. This you must... Uh, specifically uh, asked to, to explain about uh, quasi-experimental design. So whatever is the experimental design done in applied sciences, agriculture, veterinary or any other field, biotechnology, whatever it is mostly quasi-experimental design unless it is conducted laboratory conditions, a pure uh, trials like uh, clinical trials for drugs and all they collect. That is purely experimental because you will have the man control group and you are accountable, I should be explained how you have chosen a group. Randomization is there. Quasi-experimental design, there is no random allocation. Random is you want to choose students. Uh, objectively you want to choose. What you do is you organize the names of the students in an alphabetical manner. Every first one, tenth one, eleventh one, like that. What is the size of the sample you decide accordingly you select. Randomization is... It is an easy way of randomization, simple randomization. Using random tables. Now you can generate random.org is there on internet. So using that also you can select. Size you know, but sample or population you know. There are three differences. Population is there, sample frame is there, from which you select the sample. So you describe the sample, like this age group having this particular this thing, background, and studying, attending formal school, attending particular class, this, these are the various characteristics you describe. You include in inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria. One standard exclusion criteria is not giving consent, informed consent from parents and child is not available, you exclude them. So this randomization is not there in quasi-experimental design. Quasi-experimental design, like an actual experiment, a quasi-experimental study attempts to demonstrate a cause and effect relationship between a dependent and independent variable. You want to apply two techniques for improving the uh, mathematical ability. Now Abacus has come, so many these things have come. So you develop a model. This model you have developed for underachieving children. Then two models, earlier there is already one model is there, it's a proven model. Two models you apply to two groups of children and then you study. Or same group you apply, you collect pretest, do the pretest, or you same group you just do the post test. Because post-test is done, earlier how they were you do not know, it is not standard one. So if you do the same group, pre-test and post-test, what was earlier, what is present, then you know that is another type. You Here you are not having any control group. Even if you have control group in quasi-experimental design, it is not randomized. Simply you are selecting the group to compare same class, same age group as as you select one to so single digit students, 
you have this decided. Lowest from this number to this number you select for one group, this number to this number you select. You are not giving any intervention to another group. That is, this group, pre-test and post-test you have done and then you have seen the effect. Control group is there, then you compare them with the performance. So that is a quasi-experimental design. It's exact random selection is not there in quasi-experimental design. Like an actual experiment, a quasi-experimental study attempts to demonstrate a cause and effect relationship between a dependent and independent variable. In contrast, the sample are sorted into groups based on non-random variables. Quasi-experimental design is a useful in conditions in which true experiments cannot be conducted for ethical and practical reasons. Quasi-experimental design includes a broad, in a broad range of non-randomized intervention studies. These are the studies that plan to evaluate, plan to evaluate these are the studies that plan to evaluate interventions but do not use randomization. Like randomized trials, quasi-experimental aim to demonstrate a causal relationship between intervention and an outcome. These can use both pre- and post-intervention measurements and non-randomly selected control groups. Quasi-experimental designs are divided into four types. Next slide. Quasi-experimental designs without control group, that is one type. Quasi-experimental designs that use control groups but no pretest. Quasi-experimental designs that use control groups and pretest. First one is no control group. Second one uses control group but no pretest. It's only experimental group and control group or intervention group and other group is compared. No pretest is there. Quasi-experimental designs that use control groups but does the pretest. Interrupted time series designs. These are the four types of quasi-experimental designs available. These are also explained uh, mostly by the biomedical researchers only. Now let us see how to design, what are the quasi-experimental designs without control groups. The one group here, uh, X is intervention, it is not into, it is X is intervention, O is outcome. One is one group, one intervention. The one group post-tested only, just now I said. You don't do any pre-test, you do not have any control, only post-test you do. Do the intervention and do only post-test. Here X is the intervention and O is the outcome variable in this study design. An intervention X is implemented and a post-test observation is taken. It is not questionable, it is not scientific because there is no comparison. You do not have a control group. You do not have a pretest. Only you are giving an intervention and taking the post test. So you are claiming that the child has improved or candidate has improved. There is outcome is better. So this is question. So the, this is how they have developed this explains. Next one is the one group, this is mostly used. The one group pretest and post test design. So, you will have only one group, one group pre and post test. Here is O1, intervention, outcome, O2. That is pre-test is O1, intervention, X, post test is the 2. 
for the same group. This is a commonly used study design. A single pretest measurement is taken, that is O1, an intervention X is implemented and a post-test measurement is taken, that is O2. In this instance, period O1 frequently serves as a control. So you want to implement a betterment. Every day you are taking class for one hour. You want to take class for two hours. That is the intervention. So one hour class marks, two hour class marks, two hour intervention and outcome. If it is a betterment is there, meaning a two hour instruction is, has a better impact on the assimilation of information and performance of the student. This is a simple example. Quasi-experimental design without control group. The same one continued. Another model. The one group pretest post test design using a double pretest. Earlier one pretest and then intervention post test. Here two pretest. The one group pretest post test design using a double pretest. The 0, O1, O2, intervention, O3. That is, post test is only one. The advantage of this study design is over A2 is that adding a second pretest prior to the intervention helps provide evidence that that can be used to refute the phenomena of regression to the mean and compounding as alternative explanations for any observed association between the intervention and post-test outcome. That is, you want to assure that it's only because of your test. This is another model. We have seen only post-test, pre-test, post-test plus intervention. And next one is two pre-test, intervention and one post-test. Same, the four types are there in the no control groups. The last one. Quasi-experimental designs without control group. The one group pretest post test design with a non-equivalent dependent variable. Non-equivalent dependent variable. One, O1 is one, one variable. O1B is another one. O2A, O2B. Here, one group is O1A is one group, O1B is another group. It involves the inclusion of non-equivalent dependent variable. Here, it is not random, non-equivalent dependent variable. In addition, the primary dependent variable, A. Variables A and B should assess similar constructs, that is, the two measures should be affected by similar factors and compounding variables except for the effect of the intervention. Variable A is expected to change because of the intervention X, whereas the variable is not. Another example is, for this the best example is, same students, history is the problem. So you are giving a tutoring or additional class or additional information intervention in history. You are pretesting for history and English. Post test again you are testing for history and English. If there is an increment or improvement in history, it is because of this. Same children who did not receive any intervention in English but took the pretest did not improve in post test also. Meaning strongly you are saying when I have given the test in intervention, the child has improved in history because intervention is only given in history, not in English. So to establish that this model is used.
this is only a small example. So quasi-experimental design without control group, four models are there. These four models we have discussed. Quasi-experimental designs without control group, this is also another one, not much used. Here is, you remove the intervention. Here again, the removed treatment design, it adds a third post-test measurement to the one group pre-test and post-test design and then removes the intervention before the final measure is made. This are several people have developed several designs. This is one model developed. Here is, you are giving intervention to the group 1 and testing it to O2 is the test. Another post-test you are giving and you are removing the intervention and again testing. That is the fourth post post test you are giving. So th that way what is happening is you are trying to test your impact of your effect. That is the intervention. Here one group O1 is one group. Pretest is the one is pretest. Next one is O2 is the outcome. That is post test and another post test you are conducting to the intervention. You are removing the intervention and trying out the same thing. Again test the fourth one. Repeating the same thing without intervention. Fourth test you are giving. Same, same group. These are the various models explained by various researchers. They tried out these things and there are, as you know, in academia, we always ready to find the mistakes in other designs. So there are several questions and controversies on all these designs also. But the best one is the second one, pre-test, post-test. One pre-test, one post-test. That is for those without control group. Only one group you are doing, pre and post is the best one. Now quasi-experimental designs with control group. Earlier five types we have seen without any control group, same group we are using. Doing pretest to post-test two times, giving intervention, doing pretest twice, doing post-test twice kind of thing. Now quasi-experimental designs without with control group but no pretest. You have a control group. The purpose of control group pretest is to say that it is because of your intervention. As you have already have a control group, there is no need for pretest. But to be on safe side, people also do the pretest in many researches. Quasi experimental designs with control group but no pretest. Post test only design with non equivalent groups. Intervention group, that is intervention O1, control group O2. O2 here is not a pretest, it is another control group. O1 is actual experimental group. An intervention X is implemented for one group and compared to a second group. The use of a comparison group helps prevent certain threats to validity, including the ability to satisfactorily to statistically adjust for compounding variables. Because in this study design, the two groups may not be equivalent. That assigned because it's not randomly selected. Assigned to the groups is not by randomization. Compounding may exist. So to avoid compounding only, we are doing the control and experimental group and measuring using the same tools we are measuring before, after, after we are measuring, no pretest is there. Quasi-experimental design that use control groups and pretest. Second model is control is there, pretest is there. 
In this type, the intervention is not randomized. The control groups selected are comparison groups. Obtaining pretest measurements on both the intervention and control groups allows the researchers to assess the initial comparability of the groups. The assumption is that if the intervention and control groups are similar at the pretest, the lesser the chance for compounding variables differing between the two groups. Though the randomization is not there, the groups at least have to be equal. For example, you are conducting a study because it's easily understood I am taking this example. Obesity of the people. A grade 1 obesity is uh, if a body mass index is between 225 to 30 is the grade 1 obesity. So you are want to educate them on their diet. What two groups you want to select? One you want to keep it as a control, one you want to use as a intervention. You want to give the education. You select people. Where do you select? The source can be a slimming center or it can be a door-to-door uh, -door survey or it can be a walkers group. Somewhere you select the women. BMI, based BMI is your criteria, obese people you are there. Again you fix it as a vegetarian, non-vegetarian, without comorbidities, like a comorbidity is like a without BP, without sugar, without uh, that this. So you eliminate all this. So you characterize, you describe the characters of characteristics of your sample. So all women aged between 35 to 45 years having BMI between 25 to 30 without any comorbidities, willing to cooperate, residing in that particular area, you are selecting as a group. So one group and again from this group using some kind of method you classify them into. So there also they should be willing to participate in your intervention program. And those who are not willing to participate in the intervention program but willing to give the uh, uh, respond, uh, give the information needed for the research, they will be control group. So you give the intervention and then do the pretest both to the control and to the intervention group and then after the intervention you test the result. So this is quasi experimental design that use groups control group and pretest. Next one. Interrupted time series designs. This is very mostly used in uh, life sciences and uh, biosciences. Here, one, two, three, four, up to five and then you have the intervention 6, 7, 8, 9. This is the outcome measured. An interrupted time series design is one in which a string of consecutive observations equally spaced in time is interrupted by the imposition of a treatment or intervention. The advantage of this design is that with multiple measurements, both pre and post intervention, it is easier to address and control for compounding and regression to the mean. Here you are giving an intervention, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, different interventions you are giving or phases of interventions you know. One intervention, 1 plus 1 intervention, 1 plus 2 intervention like that you are. In agricultural or maybe adding of something or adding of something like that it may be there and then you measure the outcome. This is interrupted time series designs are mostly used in life sciences rather than social sciences. So till now we have gone through the quasi-experimental design without any control group, with the control group and among them the best one is uh, pre and post test is the best model. Now let us look at the factorial research design. 
The factorial research design is a statistical design mostly used in almost all researches, even in education. Factorial design is a statistical experimental design used to investigate the effects of two or more independent variables, that is factors, on a dependent variable. By manipulating the levels of the characteristics and measuring the resulting impact on the dependent variable, researchers can identify each element's unique contribution and their combined or interactive effects. So here is two groups you are selecting, boys and girls. You are giving instruction to the boys. One hour, girls also for one hour. You would like to see the difference between boys and girls in the achievement of a particular course, maybe subject English or whatever it is. So this can be studied using the factorial design. Here is one independent variable is again classified based on two aspects. And then the intervention given is also categorized and effect is seen. That is factorial design. There are number of models here also. Factorial design, it permits the, it permits the researcher to study the effects of two or more predictor, that is independent variables, simultaneously. In addition, it helps to determine interactions among variables and arrive at conclusions or testing of a hypothesis. So here is at a time two independent variables can be studied. In ANOVA also you can study multiple number of independent variables on one factor or one variable where you use uh, one way analysis of variance and within groups, between groups, using many more tests have come, that can test and that can. There also you can see. Here, design itself you are developing to study the difference. There, the research is conducted either in descriptive or analytical study and using the information data, you are trying to assess. Here in design itself, to exclude the error, you are including the independent variables with their classification. Here see, major independent variables, levels of subdivisions. For example, uh, you are teaching within the class, students' performance may not be improving. You thought, I let them take the, let me take them outside the class and give the instruction. Within class, one hour instruction. Outside class, one hour instruction. Within class, four hour instruction. Outside class, four hour instruction. You want to see the effect. Is it, setting is important or time is important. This is the design. Next. Target group also same important. Time is important. Next one slide. One slide. Here is, for example, uh, can you move forward? Move forward. Move forward. Ah, on this one. So this is the analysis. Here it is, outside the class the average is for one hour five. Within the class, inside the class also average is five. It's not same. Outside the class for four hours it is seven. Inside the class it is seven. And an average outside the class it is six. Inside the class it is 6. This factorial design research indicates that time is important, not the setting. 
Can you move forward? Factorial designs are highly useful also. If you factorial design is a statistical one, just now I have explained. It permits the researcher to study the effects of two or more predictor variables simultaneously. That is the reason why when you design, include two independent variables in the design itself to avoid error. This factorial designs are better. Analysis also is easier. Basic types of uh, no no go for earlier earlier ah yes sir the basic model I will explain the basic types of uh, factorial design includes two into two factorial design it can be two into three three into three also it involves two independent variables each with two levels to investigate the effects of two factors on behavior or outcome. 3 into 3 factorial design, it involves three independent variables, each with three levels, including multiple independent variables, which are also called factors in study design. It is, we call it a factorial design. So many people ask, why a factorial design? Uh, Anyway, ANOVA can be used to study the difference between groups and within the groups. And that is, after you collect the data, you do the analysis. Whatever comes, you are interpreting using as a result. Here in the study, design itself is your intention is to see the difference and effect of it. So in factorial design, you include in the design itself, then analysis also is. This is a 3 into 3. 3. You can have level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 1, level 2. So uh, one variable. Factorial design is a dependent variable or independent variable? This is independent variable. But level 1 and level 2, this is a dependent variable. That is dependent variable, not independent variable. Right? Two independent variables also you can see the effect. But we are using in the factorial design for independent variables only or dependent variables also? Both see intervention you are giving and the effect you are seeing. Duration hours of instruction is also independent variable. Whereas uh, the uh, setting is also independent variable. Intervention is given. Intervention <coughs> is tested. Which, which works out better? Which setting you want to see the better. Here also, when you want to assess the infrastructure influence, for example, to tell you the thing, self-study. Self-study, how long a person, attention of a child is only for 45 minutes, even we, one hour or 45 minutes. In corporate schools, the child is made to study, self-study, say for nearly 6 to 8 hours a day. That is what your study chair kind of thing is given to the child. Without moving, the child has to revise, 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 revise for long hours. So, if that is taken as a single position like a setting we have studied, and there is no uh, clarification of doubts or no mentoring or no facilitation for reading, 
or doubt clarification is not there. So you are going, studying continuously. There is no scope for you to uh, clarify your doubts. A student needs to be clarified then and there. If we include such model here, hours of study with a uh, instructor's uh, clarification of doubt, without clarification of doubt, uh, such models can be developed. That is both, it's not the dependent and independent variable in factorial design. Here we are studying the independent variables, two, three independent variables we are studying, giving the intervention and study. Like quasi-experimental design, intervention is there, pre-test and post-test you are doing. Here also, factorial design, you are seeing the outcome, like quasi-experimental design only. Here is, instead of having number of groups, in quasi-experimental design, number of groups are not there. Here, you can, there is a scope for you to have the groups. Groups can be, it's an improvement over quasi-experimental design. factorial design. X is an intervention there. Here also same X can be used. But variable can be classified. You group them and then see the impact of it. Generally we thought that factor is nothing but independent variable. So that's why factorial design See, factor is a a variable may consist of number of factors also. Power T is a fact variable. Socio-economic status is a variable. Number of factors are there. There may be one single factor also. So, a compound factor or a factor, how you define it depends. And mostly variable is a better term used rather than a factor. Because it's a statistical design, they use the factor. Factorial design is used. Here is factor as gender, all independent variables take from age, gender, uh, occupation, education, income, place of residence, size of family, type of family. Just a little bit, man. Yes. Independent variable is nothing but factor also, we can yes, do yes. instead of that. That's why yes. factorial design is nothing but it is, uh, experiment is conducting on only and independent, independent yes, yes. Yeah, I, I understand. But factor in other sciences, other, other than if you keep factorial design on other side, factor is used for dependent variable also. Dependent variable also we can use we factor. Can factor not in, in terms related to the factorial design. As a general term, if you take a factor in research, it's it can also uh, risk factors. Okay. Risk factors. It's a factor only. But as you said, for factorial design, it's mostly used only for independent variables. Yes. Yes. This is manipulation of in intervention is given for variables. It is not manipulation of variable also. You are not touching the variable here. You are not uh, interfering in the variable. Only the intervention is given. Exposure is given. So in the factorial, for a single group, different factors... Uh, classes, the classes of the groups. The intervention will be given and... Uh, the impact is studied. Or outcome quasi, is studied. Outcome is studied. The quasi, we have uh, two different groups. Ah, uh, quasi. I will tell you, in quasi experimental design, no control group. Oh, First to model is yeah. no control group. No control group with only post test. No control group with post test and uh, pre test and post test. No okay. control group with two pre test and one post test. No control group with. Two post pre-test and two post-test also, like that. Different designs are there. This is the researcher's innovation. So because we have to learn as a researchers all the designs available, 
or we, we can improve upon those designs also. We can also be an innovator and design a new design also. So as Sir has said, factorial design handles independent variables, different groups within the independent variables and then their relationship is studied on an outcome of an intervention. Simply saying. Come to last, last slide. The researcher needs a clear understanding of all types of research designs available and based on the nature and data needs of the research problem, one should select the research design and for different phases or stages, two or three different designs also can be made. It is not that you should stick to one. You can do the situational analysis, go to the field and do the situational qualitative research. After the situational analysis, you want to develop an intervention. So again another design can be developed. So for each stage of research, one design can be applied. So this is in short is the research design and we have it tried. Anything else to ask? Uh, Non-equivalent uh, dependent variables, O1 remove O2, O3 remove O4. I yes, O is outcome, uh, X is uh, intervention. O1 means always pretest. O2 is post test. If it comes Why after a intervention. Why remove then O1 and O2? Pardon? Uh, O1 and O2, why and not understood? <coughs> they have developed like that. The innovator, the researcher has uh, developed the research design. He called it O1 is a one group pretest, O2 is another group. Outcome. Outcome is O. One is group. Two is same group if you do the post test, that is two. Same group. Same group also. So they are numbered for different models like that. X is intervention. O3 o is always outcome only. O3 remove O4, same. O3 and O4. Same group you are So the, that is one model where they have done the two pre tests. O1, O2, two pretests they have done. Given the intervention, O3 is the only one post test is done. Postata nasty. Tana, Pratha, Vastutaha, Voy to say Kahatha? Why you, you, you can ask you can ask why two pretest? Why two pretests is they want to establish, it is only because of their intervention, the outcome has come. To establish that, they have done two pre -tests. That cannot be established by one pre -test. It can be established. The innovator has developed two pre -tests. So, there will be difference in test one, test two? Or both will be same? Both same, same. same. Unless there is a time gap. See, reliability tests also we do what we do. Sir. One month after the test we did. Such tests are sort of questioned uh, because uh, they want you to do the uh, split of test. Academic stress. Today your mood is very bad. I administered the scale. The results are there. After one month, you may not be in the same mood. The result may be less. So some some attributes which are more prone to change, it is, it is questioned. Like reliability, you can do pretest, administer, after one month you do the, repeat the test, between the two you study the relationship and then if it is more than 0.8 or so, it is good. Actually, actually the pre-test is uh, known for the existing knowledge. 
what the group or the yes 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 yes, yes right right present. present so the posters is much important that shows the result of x factor yeah posters you are doing so what is the guarantee that uh, earlier also you had the same uh, uh, did not have the same knowledge so i am saying that uh, this is what because of me you have improved treatment so is being given. so exposure and treatment is question so I, some people say that post test should be conducted twice that is sustainability you finish the exam today one month later many people forget what they wrote in their exam so what happens is to test the sustainability post test again after two months or three months you so two pre test it can be post test this pre test conducted may be different timings also that was not mentioned in the design pre test if the sustainability is there then your treatment would be yeah. effective effective right? generally every students like this pre test and post test direct without any pre test how can we conduct the post test on what basis we are going to do for the post test is there any base no 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 that is the reason why first type of test is question and it is not much used see whichever I test the, design is more popular <laughs> it means that without any base how can we anybody somebody is doing like that uh, research there is no it is done in community so we go with an assumption that uh, this people do not know anything and is there any example for that without pre test directly for post test yeah madam i said without without any post test we can go for directly for post test also that is one model is there uh, is it relatively is there some factor that uh, we need we no need the pre test or something no 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 pre test has to be there if pre test are not being conducted then you have a yes. control group ah. yes so control group from the same group here again control group is a different individual intervention group is a different individual and equal we have to establish that their uh, intelligence and academic achievement are almost equal that is i said see, take all the students who got so many marks within that range or low performed medium performed <coughs> moderate performance high performance categorize so you take all those who are low performance below 10 control below 10 intervention below 10 if you take the students all students maybe some of them may be high others say same student who is performing very poorly in mathematics may be very good in social science languages and other things so across the subjects also you must collect okay very simple to say for control group there is no need for pre test right madam control group we don't need if you have a control group you don't need a pre test so you know this is a small thing i'm asking in a classroom okay so what about if you have a control group uh Then same to everyone ah. like the x factor is given uh, uh, for everyone same but the result outcome comes differently in different uh, like boys the uh, results are different girls results are different uh, for uh, slow learners uh, for uh, yeah. there, there are different results comes so this comes under which say uh, say several researches have been conducted communication skills of the teacher communication skills of the candidate listening skills past familiarity with the subject earlier familiar so it's easy to follow familiarity of the subject noise in the class that is a dis information another thing with the like and dislike of the teacher also likes and dislikes of the candidate likes and dislikes for the subject likes and dislike for the teacher this also influences communication such, effectiveness such factors will not affect when we do a test uh, that also can be assessed 
that see if you want to design very quickly that is the reason you one stage you do the explorative research collect all the information you assess your sample for all these factors and then you select the sample exclude all those people who have this problem include all these people who do not have this problem so that is the reason why in research sample we follow inclusion criteria exclusion criteria inclusion criteria is not very clear in social sciences we can include we can exclude student who is uh, uh, not regular to the class not interested in the subject so such things you can uh, one checklist kind of thing you can prepare collect information so based on the score in the checklist you select the candidate sample that way by bias and errors can always be overcome with effort of the research thank you राष्ट्रीय कार्यशाला अस्मे आगता तिरपति पद्मावती महिला विश्वविद्यालय श्री शारदा महोदया ते अत्र आगत अस्मा रिसर्च डिजाइन इतने मीनिंग किसर्च डिजाइन कि मीनिंग किमस्त टाइप कथ कति प्रकार पुनः क्वासी एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिजाइन डिजाइन किमस्ती फैक्ट्रिकल डिजाइन किमस्ती तद विषय सम्यक्तया ते प्रतिपादितवती पुनः विषय पुनः वयम सर्वे अवगतवान तदर्थम तेम भूय भूय धन्यवाद वितना महोदया शिक्षक शिक्षा केन्द्र पक्षत विश्वविद्यालय पक्षत शिक्षा विभाग पक्षत कार्यशाला पक्षत धन्यवाद धन्यवाद वितना पुनः अस्म कार्यशाला निर्देशक संयोजकभ्य आचार्यभ्य शोध छात्रेभ्य सर्वेश धन्यवाद विनमें उत्तर गुरु धन्यवाद